Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bill Anderson, coming live from the Costa del Sol, living up to its name today. A little bit breezy, but a beautiful sunny day. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined today by uh, Michelle Greenwood. Michelle, we're going to tell them what you do in a moment, but welcome to Expat Radio. Thank you so much, Bill. Michelle, we, 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 we met it's a number of years ago, actually, um, and uh, it was in connection with, uh, we didn't talk about it a lot, but you, your uh, work, voluntary work, I would add, with uh, Age Concern down here on the coast. Uh, you're a busy woman, aren't you? Yeah, certainly am, yeah. I don't think I ever anticipated to be quite so busy, but yeah, it, um, it gets busier all the time. Yeah. Now, uh, for anyone who knows the United Kingdom, they they might get some hints from your accent uh, of where where your roots are, where your origins are. Yeah. So originally I was from Durham. Um. Yeah. Coal mine in Villageville. My father was a coal miner. Um. But then I met my husband. He was from Newcastle. So yeah, moved up a little bit north. Um, yeah. yeah. So a little bit of that still. And obviously I've been back on holiday recently, so it comes back a little bit stronger when you meet with the family, doesn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, yeah it, it, it certainly is a kind of Newcastle. Uh, I, I think D- D- Dave and Franz was going to do a why up lab or a lad or something like that. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so, M- 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 Michelle, let's just talk a little bit about about yourself. Uh, in, in the UK, what, what 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 kind of work were you doing there? Yeah, in the UK, I left um, school and thought that I always wanted to be a nurse. That was my first plan. Um, at the time when I left it was they were launching a project called Project 2000 and my my that. idea was that I was going to be a children's nurse and that didn't quite work out because my birthday is in August so I had to wait a year because I wasn't old enough to join the join the nurse training at the time right so somebody said to me oh well, there's a there's a, a course at college if you get in there you can do this medical secretary you can do all this kind of stuff and do that until you get to be the age where you can take up the training so off I went and became a medical secretary and got all of those skills as well, um, only to then join a year later to do the um, children's nursing, which I was broken hearted. I couldn't do it. How those right. ladies and gentlemen who are children's nurses, I, I hold a badge of honour for them because the emotional stress for it is just unbelievable. Yeah. So um, yeah, so I, I left that route, but then I decided I still wanted to work in the NHS. So I went off to university and did a business management degree, and I went into the health service more on a level of projects and troubleshooting and things like that. So, yeah, it was quite lucky because at the time, the government set up um, what they were calling a program called um, Improvement Partnership for Hospitals. So they twinned with some um, big companies in America, and also Nissan was in Sunderland at the time, and we very much took business industry and put it into hospitals and try to get waiting times down, try to get things running a little bit more smoothly, a little bit more financial um, stability. So yeah, so that led me into cancer, diabetes and lots of different highlight projects. Yeah, so all within the NHS bill. <laughs> right, right. So what what changed? Because you don't live in Newcastle anymore and you're not working no, for the NHS. No, that's what they say, isn't it? You know, you meet the man and he just away doesn't he that's it yeah. yeah so I met my husband um he was from Newcastle and we met on one of those nights out in Newcastle where you know you you, you spend the early hours on the quayside and um, yeah so we used to have some great nights up there but yeah met him and then um he at the time was a property developer and when I right. met him it was that time where things were booming if, as you like um within property so he was buying and selling a lot of property in Newcastle and the company Taylor Woodrow at the time was um, building a lot of property here in Spain. They contacted my husband and said to him, look, uh, would you come over and would you try and sell some of the um, houses and everything over here? Um, not living in Spain at the time then, we were just commuting backwards and right. forwards and he was spending a lot more time here. And so he was an agent for Taylor Woodrow and um, that, that got us used to Spain. We bought property in Spain up in um, Puerto Bonus on Los Alqueros Golf. So then I had a baby, my beautiful daughter, who um, is always by my side. If everybody sees us in the Costa del Sol, we're, we're known as the Ant and Dex, yeah. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, yeah, we're always together. But we had her, and we visited Spain every summer and every holiday, and we thought, you know, maybe one time we might actually come and move here. Um, 
Before we moved here, however, the property boom was still going and we decided to move into Cyprus for five years. Um, Alicia went off and finished school and everything over there, but it just it just didn't feel like home. We came back to Spain right. and settled in Spain and everything here. So, yeah, property was the key. <laughs> right. Okay. So that, that that was what brought you, and I guess that also brought you to this part of Spain as well. Yeah. It did. Yes. At the time, the um, Taylor Woodrow developments were very prominent down in the Costa del Sol, and that was the main sort of right. um, link for my husband. But obviously, there was lots of buying at the time so you know it was it was it seemed as though this was the ideal area for us so we lived in um a house that we'd had while uh, you know 25 years we've had it and um, we lived in Porta Venus but then we we felt that for us Porta Venus wasn't home it was more of a holiday destination for right. us and it wasn't a life so we decided yeah. to move a little bit further down the coast yeah yeah, for for those that are listening and may not know the sort of geography and and uh, identity of parts of Spain, but we we we're, we're on on the south coast. Um, uh, well, I'm I'm in uh, La Cala de Mijas. Mijas is sort of halfway between um, uh, Malaga and and Marbella, or Fuencarola Marbella. Let's put it that way. Puerto Benus. Now, Michelle, that's the posh part. <laughs> that, 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 that's that, yeah. that's a bit with, with all the um uh the the, the big fancy uh, floating gin palaces in the harbor and um uh the what do you call it the f- Ferraris higher car Ferraris yeah, yeah. And, and all of that yeah yeah I do think it's changing though I mean we visited um, we popped down there now and again but. It's always been, Port of News has always been the sort of luxury area, if you yes. like. But I do think Malaga's getting, you know, a lot more bigger yachts, bigger cars, lots of things. And you've got the city vibe down there as well. So I do think things have changed since, you know, the 20 years that we've been here now. Yeah, I, I mean, but Puerto Banus has, has that sort of um, reputation, shall we say. But, but I think a, a number of areas along the coast here now are kind of upping their game a little bit, aren't they? Um, certainly are, yeah. And, and, and you know, uh, as a Scotsman, you, you have to judge the prices of things, but how much do they charge you for a, a small beer? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, we, we, I remember the first time I had a gin and tonic with my husband in one of those bars in Port of Venus, and I think at the time, and we were talking maybe 20 years ago, it was 15 euros for a gin and tonic. Yeah. So the next time, as he was obviously a Geordie, he said to me, well, look, can you just have the gin and not the tonic? And he came back and he said, yeah. <laughs> 15 euros, he said, we'll not try that bargain basement anymore. You can have the gin and the tonic, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, th- th- things over these years uh, have, have certainly changed quite a bit. Um, but uh, I, I, I don't know. Malaga City is, is Malaga City, and, and, and they, they have developed it uh, a, a lot over the years. Um, but you, you, you don't live in, in Malaga City, do you? But which part of the no, coast are you in? I live in Fuengarola, yeah. Um, it's Lisco Torrebanca, just outside of Fuengarola, yeah. But um, Fuengarola is my home now. Right. Home, more and more, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we were visiting some friends in Fuengarola uh, yesterday, actually, uh, yesterday morning. And oh. uh, they, 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 they're a German couple, um, so their, their house is more a holiday apartment. Um, but uh, it's right on the front line. It's five floors up. Fortunately, there was a lift there. But just sitting with them and chatting uh, from the terrace, which which is say, fr- front line beach, um, w- we could see all the way to uh, I don't know, almost Ben uh and and right down. And it wasn't clear enough to see Gibraltar, but we could have done on on a really clear day. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, honestly, the the views were just spectacular. Yeah, we are quite. Sort of look out your window and think, you know, this it is a beautiful place to live, and yeah. you know, there's so much diversity now. There's you know, you can go and have your breakfast, and it'll cost you two euros for a tostado and a coffee, or you can go, sure. like we were saying, and spend you know 20 euros on a breakfast. It's just you know, it's got a little bit of everything for everyone, yeah, yeah, it, it, it certainly has. And uh, you know, just what you're saying there, uh, Michelle, I, I, I was doing a, a, a podcast uh, this morning with, with a friend of mine, and um, 
you know, he's running his own business. In fact, Chris was on just a couple of weeks ago, running his own business, very busy. And he said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to spend time just to appreciate where I live. And, uh, you know, we were just commenting about this. Vicky and I quite often, we're only like four minutes down to the beach from the house here. And uh, we quite often just go down, sit on a bench, um, looking out uh, to the Mediterranean and, and just appreciating it uh, r- rather than being constantly caught up with doing and doing and doing it and, and not just appreciating the place where we live. Yeah, no, that that is right. And it is, you know, we don't work as such with volunteers and things, but life does take over and you suddenly realise that for one week you've never really kind of appreciated. We, um, we, we're a bit of a mad lot. We've started a Sunday dippers group on a Sunday and we've been doing it for months now. We're going to the sea for literally 10 minutes on a Sunday morning with age groups from, you know, 20 to 85 and it's oh. been freezing cold during the winter but it's been, you know, it, it is just something to sort of appreciate. It's really, really good. You're a brave woman. I, I tell you <laughs> what. <laughs> it, I hear it's worse in Scotland if you tried up there. I didn't, I didn't attempt that. Well, well, yeah. I mean, I I grew up on on the east coast of Scotland, and um, <laughs> I mean, al- although the the beaches uh, from Edinburgh would tend to be more the Firth of Forth, but they, they are tidal, and and you're talking about the North Sea, you know, um, and yeah, it, it's blooming freezing, you know, <laughs> even on a hot day, the water is freezing. Yeah. I, I don't think the North Sea gets much beyond sort of. Um, you know, breaking ice, you know, it's, it's really cold up there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've been reading lots of health benefits about it, though, Bill, apparently, yeah. So they tell me. Yeah. And I, I, I believe not them. not convincing you. I'm not convincing me <laughs> at all. Listen, if, 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 if we, we quite often go, we, we don't really go sunbathing on the beach, but we, we quite often go down to the beach uh, for, for a walk along it. And if I get my feet wet... That is a, a an adventurous day for me, um, <laughs> because I, actually on on this part of the coast, um, the, the water is not as warm. The Mediterranean water is not as warm as it is if if you go sort of round and uh, to the eastern part of Spain, because we do get the currents here from uh, uh, from the Atlantic, uh, and even on a really hot day, uh, we had some friends uh, visiting us from Russia. And uh, it, it was a scotching summer. And, and uh, Stanislav said, oh, the water is freezing. <laughs> yeah, it is. We've noticed that. You know, some days that it can be bright blue skies and the water's freezing cold. And then other days you have grey skies and it's quite warm. Yeah, it, it is amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you've started, what, what, is your, what is it you call your club? Your, yeah, Sunday Dippers. The Sunday yeah. Dippers. The Sunday Dippers. Well... <laughs> Ah, oh, you're a brave woman, I tell you, Michelle. What 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 have been what have been the 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 good bits for you? I mean, you 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 lived in Cyprus for five years. Mm-hmm. Um, what have been the good bits for you about about coming to to Spain and to this part of Spain? How how has that felt? Yeah, Spain for this part. Um, I think we came and we wanted a we were taking a sort of back step of working, and you know we we managed to both retire, so. Spain was the ideal, my, my husband loves his cars, so his idea was, you know, we just get a car, we pop in the car, we put the dog in the back and we can travel to France, we can travel to Germany, we can we can just do all of that travelling. Yeah. So that's, in the early years, yeah, that was definitely what we did, every every now and again we went off on these little trips, however more latterly I don't think we have. But for me, I think living in Spain is just much more that it feels the temperature's one thing, you know, it's, it's always quite nice to go out in the evenings and the daytime and things, yeah. rather than Newcastle where, you know, you're, you're more than likely <laughs> expecting the, the rain every single day. Yeah. Um, but we've, I suppose one of the difficult things we did was that when we originally came over, a lot of my life was built around my friends and family from the UK. So right. They visited quite a lot and they kept coming over. And then obviously that wonderful um, COVID hit and we kind of had a bit of a realisation that life and living here wasn't, we weren't, we were living here, but we didn't have a life here. Right. We were kind of, you know, sort of in our home, we looked to have a nice home, but we hadn't sort of engaged in the community, we'd not got out there. So after COVID, my husband joined both societies, he got out and met friends and myself 
um, which we'll talk about later, but yes. join a charity and, you know, start to meet people. And since we've done that, it feels as though we're much more of a community. We yes. we integrate well with the Spanish places. We're not so much of a kind of English bar thing. Our, we, we prefer to go to sort of the Spanish restaurants and things yes. like that. So we've integrated a lot with that. So I just think it's just, it, it doesn't feel as stressful and it doesn't feel, you know, I don't know, for us, we, we're quite lucky and it, it does give us a great lifestyle. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say, Michelle, uh, and you, you've had that experience that um, a lot of people move down here and, and one understands quite well why they might want to move to, to, to this area because it's a much more um, outdoor, potentially healthier uh, lifestyle, you know, because, you know, you, you, you can go be out and about, you know, really 365 days a year almost. Um, but a, a lot of people, I don't know, treat it sometimes like, a, a, let's just say, Newcastle with sun or mm-hmm. Leeds with sun. Uh, and, um, you know, you, you wonder when when they're going to stop being tourists and, yeah, and, 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 I and do think, what I you've do done. Yeah, and I do think that is a, a topic that, you know, is, and especially in sort of the age concern stuff that I do, people do come and live how they would live where they came from yes. and actually the cultures are different you know the way of life is different uh, and sometimes we don't you know once we found our nice breakfast spot and once we found out where the you know to fuel the car and where to go for a beer then you kind of stop integrating so much and you yes. kind of stay in your own sort of corners if you like and it's only if you know you suddenly need a service that you then realize hang on a second yeah i'm sure. here and i'm existing but actually i haven't integrated and you know you've got to force yourself to do that yeah it, it it's i i suppose it depends on on what people are looking for by by coming here yeah uh, and you know if, if if what they want is is the um you know let's not say cheap because spain isn't cheap anymore but it's more economical i think to live here uh, th- than it would be, let's just say, in, in the UK, that their pension will still go a little bit further down here th- than it would go in, in, in the UK. And if that's all they want, just better weather, a little bit more affordable for them, then fine. But people do kind of miss out a bit, don't they, on um, experiences, I think, if, if that's as far as their, their their life in Spain takes them. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think that's also a sort of, whilst things are happy and positive and moving forward, but then, you know, some sort of crisis happens and then you realise that, that, you know, it is important to be able to understand, you know, even just a little bit of Spanish or, yes. you know, understand where you can get that support from if you, you, you're you unable yourself. But it, it is, I think, like you say, you come over and you think, all right, I'm going to just holiday and yeah. that's fine, but it's when you need those services that aren't in holiday mode that, you know, things things go wrong yeah yeah and and let's be honest uh michelle i mean especially since brexit um most of the people who are, are coming over here uh, and you know people who've been here for a lot of years are getting on in years um you know the the non-lucrative visa is 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 i mean they call it the pensioners visa because pensioners in general are the only people who can afford to come over here and not work for five years yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. So, so and I think you're right. Yeah, so it is that the that, that age. And I mean, my daughter, she's 28. And, you know, that brings challenges in her in her own right. She works, but um, she's not fluent by any means in Spanish. But there is nobody that's around her age group or everything to start meeting sort of partners and those right. kinds of things. Because, like you say, the, the age group, of the Brits and the expats that come over are a lot more of that pension age and a lot older. So it is yeah. it's about, you know, the balance of when people come younger, what is it their lifestyles like? You know, what, yes. what's getting from it, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, even, even people coming from within the EU who have a bit more possibilities for, for moving and, and working. Uh, you know, we're still seeing a, a lot of, um, especially Scandinavians buying down here, but they tend to be um, older, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, like me, you know, 50 plus um, VAT, you know? 
<laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's the only people that are around, Bill. You're right, you know, you've, you've got to choose your friends carefully, you see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so Misha, you, you you settled down here. It feels like home, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, just now, yeah. Definitely and, home, yeah, yeah. And 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 you decided, uh, and I'm not going to say um, very much about this, but you decided to offer your services to Age Concern. Um, how long ago was that? Yeah. So it was just probably about three years ago now. I think. Yeah. Just as just as it came out of COVID. Yeah. I thought, you know, I really need to start networking with some people and start to build my relationships here. So, yeah, it was, um, the start was just a few hours in a charity shop. And it's always, it's always the last one in the family now, you know. It's my husband's divorced too, when widowed to age concern. And even my dad had a little comment last week as well, yeah. I think I live for age concern now. But, um, yeah, so it was a few hours in the beginning. And then, um, I started helping doing some fundraising. But yeah. then, it's concerned here if, you know, it, it was a group of really genuinely helpful people, a small group who established it, but it's just grown and more people need help and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So my role ended up helping them with some of those processes and a little bit of their structure and um, everything like that. So, yeah, it's, it's yeah. got a lot more demanding. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, for, for for people who are listening, I don't know, from the States, they may not be aware of, of what Age Concern is. I mean, it, it was fundamentally a British-based charity, yeah? Yeah, that's right, yes. It was originally Age Concern, well, it was called Age Concern in the UK, and they latterly changed their name to Age UK. Um, right. But we got a license here in Spain, and there's a few other branches um, around Spain as well. And we got a license to operate and help here in Spain. So it's based for, and the charity in the UK and in Spain is for over 50s um, with a decent level of English. So we don't just do it for British people. Right. We have Scandinavian, Scandinavians, German people, um, different nationalities, but they must have a standard of English to allow them to sort of access the services. But um, yeah, so it, it, it works and we, we work with different organisations as well, but the majority of it is about helping those people of over 50. Yeah. And we always have this thing of, you know, people say, oh, I'm not old enough for age concern. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we can have somebody that's just celebrated their 100th birthday, but yeah, they're not old enough for age concern. So it is always a battle to try and see how we can get the younger people in and get started in that sort of journey with us so that when they are a little bit older later on, that they've yeah. already accessed some of the services, they know what we're about and they've helped us along the route. Yeah, so, so you know, on on a sort of, we're going to talk about getting old in Spain because I, I think you, you've got some really interesting things to say about that, Michelle. But um, you know, at a very simple level, um, what, what are people getting out of age concern? Is is it a kind of social context? Um, yeah, we've we've got a balance of two things, and it's it's um, one of my one of my um, motivations is constantly to try and sort of educate people a little bit more about what Age Concern does. Age Concern, if you don't really understand the charity, is about social interaction. It's about um, offering coffee mornings. It's offering road trips. It's trying to make sure that anybody that's isolated and living alone has somewhere to go and interact. The more you start to understand Age Concern, it's a lot more than that. It's about that welfare service as well. It's about helping people go to hospital, helping with translation, helping with different projects. So I always say we've got a balance. We've got the social side, which is really important for people's mental health, but we've also got the kind of crisis management and the support when things go wrong, you know, and people need help. So, yeah, we're a a wide range of services. But even the social side of things is 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 it's more than just about sitting down and having a coffee, isn't it? Because you know, if people um, are not sure about something, you know, like oh, I I got a letter from the council. Somebody's going to be there to say, well, or oh, what you have to do with this it doesn't really matter in, at that level if they speak Spanish. Somebody will be there to say, oh yeah, I had one of these, and what I had to do was this, or you know. Uh, I, I I need to renew my my. We, we call it the padron in Spain. The padron is is just like the municipal register. Or I, I need to renew it. What do I do? And somebody will be there and say, "Oh, well, it's, it's easy. You just turn up and that, and you take this with you, and and, and it's all fine." So yeah, the, the, there is a social side to it, which is really important. 
but quite, quite sort of accidentally, people are going to be getting just day-to-day -day help with um, living in Spain, aren't they? They do, definitely. And there always is um, volunteers on hand at any of the sort of social events that we have to do exactly that, Bill, to help with any of those queries. We also run sort of seminars on different topics. We do sort of fact sheets and things on, you know, in, in Spain, one of the one of the things, and I, I presume other countries as well, one of the things that um, is often a risk for some of the elderly is around being scammed or being right. pocketed or those kinds of things. We offer advice to try and keep them safe and actually, you know, and also not to think that if something has happened to them that they are so frightened to tell anybody because they feel embarrassed that it happened to them, right. but actually to create that environment for people to have that chat in a safe place where, you know, nobody's going to be judged. They're just going to help, you know, we, we want to do those things. So yeah, we do that. And um, a couple of months ago, we recently um, launched our wellbeing services as well. So we're trying to keep people sort of a bit more active and a bit more healthy. Um, so we've got chair aerobics exercises and we've got Pilates. And all of these things are run for free for right. age concerned members as well. So we don't take any money for those. We've got fantastic volunteers who support us that are trained and qualified. Yeah. So yeah, that not only do they get that advice, but they can talk to people on the different activities and things yeah. as well. So yeah, it's a good fun bunch as well. Michelle, we're going to take a short break. Uh, yeah. And we'll be back in just a few minutes. We're going to listen to the brand new single from Take That, uh, all wrapped up. Here we go. Hi. Welcome back. I'm Bill Anderson, coming live from the Costa del Sol with my guest today, Michelle Greenwood, who moved from uh, Newcastle and the National Health Service to the south of Spain and age concern. <laughs> Michelle. Sounds like quite a it is quite a journey, but actually, I I I know from conversations that we've had, uh, Michelle, your, your experience of working within the NHS, I, I think, brought something very important to your voluntary work with, with Age Concern down here. Uh, you, you know, you you're a very organised person. You think things through, and you 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 knew that. Well, you you have seen and you participated in the, the raising of funds down here and it's like we need to put these to great use wasn't it yeah that's right and i think yeah you know whilst it's great to you know do these events and everything and you know you get the buzz when it's fully booked and you bring the money in it's also important to make sure that money gets spent on what you took that money for in the first place so now we've been successful um with raising some funds and now the hard work begins where we now start to apply that money to the community and how we sort of spend that for the best use yeah. um for the money that we've raised yeah yeah and you know th th this is uh, i mentioned earlier that you know we we do have from the expat um perspective we do have an aging population uh and you know when people get old, sometimes one partner, husband, the wife dies, they're on their own. Then, um, you know, health problems develop, uh, there are language issues. Uh, th th there's a lot of complicated things that people face as they get older, aren't there, Michelle? Yeah, there certainly are. And like you said, Bill, one of it, and, you know, we chatted about before, you move to a different country, you don't always kind of have the the view that you know something's going to go wrong and like you say you yeah. come over and life's great you're spending all this time with your partner you go to the nicest restaurants but then when that partner's not there and you're suddenly sitting at home and you sort of isolate yourself and things start to get an awful lot more complicated and often these people yeah they might have family in the UK but they've lived in Spain for so long that that decision to go back to the family is often not one that they want to take. They want to stay and they want to still have their life here in Spain. So like you say, yeah, age concern for those is, you know, a lifeline, you know, whether it be one of our um, voluntary translators helping them with an appointment or a translation mm. of a letter or something, or whether it's a driver that takes them to a hospital appointment where they wouldn't be able to get to themselves. You know, we've, we've got lots of different roles of volunteers within their organisation that help with, you know, almost any, any need that they have. Yeah, and in, in terms of hospital, I mean, we have a very, uh, a very good national health service here in Spain, and uh, I know that some people will have private health care if, if if that's affordable to them. Um, 
but uh, the, the hospitals are usually, the, 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 the state hospitals are usually quite a distance away, um, you know, and, you know, even getting 20 kilometers or 25 kilometers to, to, to the main hospital, which would be the Costa del Sol Hospital in, in uh, Marbella, uh, can be very difficult for people uh, by public transport and, and, you know, they need to access these services sometimes. Yeah, it is difficult, and it's also difficult for us to get our because these services are services are offered for free, um, and it is often difficult for us to even get volunteers because you know yourself you you head to a hospital appointment and it your appointment time is ten o'clock, but actually you know it's six o'clock by the time you get home, and often the volunteer doesn't mind driving you to an appointment, but then to have to sort of stay around with people, you yeah. know it it is a big ask. But yeah, you know, a lot of those hospitals are not on the public transport route, and it is it is really key our transport services for a lot of people. Right. So that, that that's that's one area, um, yes. particularly affecting sort of uh, elderly people. Uh, you know, we've already mentioned that, um, and I've I've seen this uh, in in recent years uh, more and more. Uh, what one of the partners dying, the person being left on on their own. Um, and you know what happens when they get sick? Yeah, definitely. And this this is the thing because we've seen recently a few um, incidences where we have had people who live on their own, no family around, and you know one particular lady unfortunately um, had an Alzheimer dementia situation, and she was out in the streets in the night time. The police were bringing her back home. Oh. Nobody really knew. You know the neighbours helped a lot, but it got to the point where the situation was too difficult for the neighbours. The neighbours were starting to worry that something was going to go wrong. So again, it was it was a nice um, situation for us that we worked with Alliance, another good charity yes. down here, and worked with Aged Care. And the three organisations came together to make sure that that lady had a safe space to go to. Right. And um, the issue for that lady, unfortunately, is that she is a resident here in Spain. She's got her own property here in Spain. But now she needs that extra care now, and that will come through the social services part of here. But the paperwork and the time to organise those kinds of things is a lengthy process. So you know we we offer support like other organisations as well. But it was it was a nice feeling that the three charities came together and yes. made sure she had a safe space to be until um, until all the paperwork and everything could get sorted out. And that's not an isolated case, but unfortunately, no. you know we have those kinds of things often and I think like you say the the NHS over well not the NHS the, the Spanish health service over here is very good but where maybe it falls a little bit is when you're not having a service in a hospital and maybe you need that extra support at home by a carer or a you know yeah. a social services kind of thing um that service then isn't as good we don't have the access like you would have in the UK or anything and people often don't sort of plan for maybe we might need to yeah. care at home, we might have to pay a private um, for some of these services. And then unfortunately they get into that crisis situation where they're at home alone, they've got nobody to look after them, sure. you know, it, it, it is quite a, a scary situation for people when they get older. Yeah, and this isn't the criti criticism of, of the Spanish system, but I think it's a reality that that what we used to refer to because I I I worked uh, amongst other things across health services in the UK is continuity of care, and yeah. um, that doesn't really happen in in that way here. I mean, when my mother was in hospital, they they didn't let her out until uh, she had been seen by social work, and they had organised some kind of home help. For, for her um, so once that was in place then they let her out and and the social services kicked in there but you know in Spain there's still a big reliance isn't there Michelle on family yeah definitely and I mean that's in some respects that, that's a great thing you know a lot of the um, Spanish families and everything they have daughters granddaughters they you know build an extra room on a house so, you know that's fine but when you've come over like you say and there's you and your partner and so unfortunately something happens to your partner and then you're left alone, then it becomes difficult. One mm. of the things that we've just put into place 
um, for age concern this year, and it's a, sim- a simple process, but obviously it doesn't happen, is we put in um, what we call a hospital to home service, and that's yes. to try and help us, um, instead of being sort of reactive, to be a bit more proactive. So if somebody's going into um, hospital and they're having an operation, then we can do a home assessment and find out, have they got any family at home? Have they got any friends? You know, is there is their home um, safe for them to return home? Right. Do they need any equipment? Those kinds of things. And we're offering that service to the charities, hopefully, try and ease a little bit of that. We can't provide the care, but at least it gives us an assessment of what those people are going home to. And we know that, you know, if we don't see that person or something, we can give them a call and find out how they do. And especially if they haven't got anybody else there. So that's a, that's a really good thing, yeah. Yeah, and are you able to help with, with, with any sort of equipment for their home? Yes, we are. We've got um, an equipment loan service as part of Age Concern, and we rent um, wheelchairs, beds, um, commodes, lots of different equipment, and that is, you know, a minimal cost. I mean, some of those things are, like, you know, five euros. It's not, it's not an onerous right. um, expense, but yeah. And then we also, because of the contracts that we work with, if people want to purchase equipment, we can also broker that with them and help them out with that, and that gets delivered to their home and everything right. as well. So, yeah, we've got a good service. We, we're just looking to um, develop that a little bit further because we're getting more and more requests for different things. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, 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 and I know we had we, we had a laugh about it, but I think you were talking about a hospital bed uh, in, into a flat and th- th- these th- these things are heavy, aren't they? These hospital oh, they beds. Oh, certainly are. Yeah, and it was it it was a situation where, and this is where this hospital from home service is helping more. You know, if we somebody's returning from hospital and they do need a hospital bed, but it's ten floors up and there's no lift, and Oof. these big these beds are big, and you know most of our volunteers are on their on their um, later stages of life as well as an age concerned <laughs> charity. So you can imagine some um, cartoon characters. Um, trying to do these but with this hospital from home service it enables us to look at what their home's like so is it feasible for us to get one of these beds in if not is it you know can we order from a company that somebody will um sort of bring it dismantled and they can put it up and the, the bed funny enough and um, just recently again we linked with the lions and yes. they had a client who who needed a hospital bed so our hospital bed at the moment is um, having some good use with with the client at the moment yes yeah, so yeah. yeah, but the equipment is important. Yeah, and I, I, I think as well, you know, that um, it's sad to say a lot of people have lived here for many, many years and, and haven't really made the effort to speak Spanish. So so even if they can find the right shop to, um, you know, to look for equipment, it is they can't necessarily explain their um the situation to to, yeah yeah, Yeah. it's complicated yeah the thing is as well bill it's at that time as well they're in crisis mode they're upset themselves they really you know not feeling great you know especially if they live on their own you know their their partner's worried about them and just having somebody to be able to do do that for them you know is such a great help we had some lovely um thank you letters last week which we don't often get you know thank you letters are a thing of the past but you know we we've had a few nice thank you uh, letters recently from people who had help like these and uh, you know all all pen and paper on some nice um forget me not uh, letterhead you know very nice yes yeah that that, that that's that it's, it's not why you do it but it is nice to um to know that uh you've done something good for someone and it's helped them and yeah so where, where where do you see? I mean, do you kind of feel sometimes that you're you're a substitute for 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 the Spanish system for for elderly expats, or how how does it feel, Michelle? Yeah, I I don't think I don't think we're a substitute. I think what we should be and what we're working really hard on at the moment is to be that kind of you know that stepping stone from one to the other and that kind of organisation that allows people to understand what services are available within the Spanish um, services and just kind of be that bridge where a little bit of extra help is needed. And, right. you know, it is it is about ensuring people know where to get help from. I mean, we've, we've embarked on a um, project 
to look at Alzheimer's and dementia, and we have links with the Lions, but also um, OSA, which is the association over here in Spain for help with families and people with Alzheimer's, and that is a Spanish organisation, and they've come forward, you know, wholeheartedly to be partners with us, and, you know, yes, the language barriers are difficult on some things, but especially for people with dementia, some of the activities are equally the same, whether you're Spanish, whether you're um, yes. English, German, you know. It's a bit like when you used to take small children on holiday and the first game they used to play was Uno because nobody could speak to each other. Right. But they all knew numbers and colours and, you know, it, it worked. But, um, yeah, so trying to just give that communication to people to allow them to understand what services are around is a lot better, yeah. I I I I, th- I think I'm hearing in the background the man that comes round to sharpen the knives. Yes. I was going to say I'm not too quite sure what's happening. Then it's a little bit worrying in our street in the past two days. This gentleman just seems to keep going round and round. Yeah, a bit of a bit of a bizarre Spanish service, but yes, the the knife sharpening man is on route somewhere. Yeah, it, but it it is a blast from the past, isn't it? That they come round with with their their their, their whistle uh, and. Uh, I saw one in, in, in our village just uh, just a week or so ago and he had his, his uh, grindstones um, connected to his bicycle. So he, he was um, t- turning the pedals on his bicycle and sharpening people's knives and people come down and some of the restaurants bring the knives down and, and get them sharpened. Yeah, it's it's yeah, quite it's a blast service, from it? the yeah, past. I'm not sure we'll get away with that one in, uh, in the UK. I'm not sure there might be a... Uh, Take up in the UK, but yeah, it's actually quite quite a nice tune as well. It, it Probably it not is. best when you're doing a radio show, but yeah. <laughs> no, it, I, I was listening to it and thinking, I, I, I know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so M- Michelle, uh, really, you, you're you're um, you know, a couple of mornings a week in the charity shop uh, has really converted into something quite different, hasn't it? It certainly has, yeah, and it's it's, it's a bit of a joke within the family, but. Oh. But um, I do enjoy every minute of it, and it, it's good, you know, it's good that we are sort of moving forward, and there's lots of excitement in projects and events and things. The other thing to quickly say, Bill, is one of the things that we have done recently is we've linked with um, a group of females called the Fuengal, all the females, and they're a much younger um, group of people who are now coming into age concern and supporting us with lots of skills that were needed, like Wonderful. physiotherapy, nutrition, and everything, which is uh, which is fantastic for us, yeah. So we're emphasising a little bit more on the well-being, rather than yes. getting to the point where we have crisis, we want to try and yeah. do a bit of prevention. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm being uh, I'm stereotyping here, but you know, um, if, if you have a, an elderly couple and, and uh, the, the, the woman dies... Quite honestly, some men don't even know the direction to the kitchen, uh, and I, I know this from from uh, people people that we've known. Uh, my, my own father-in-law, he he doesn't know where the kitchen is in his house. Uh, he, he's a widower, so you, you know, even just being able to uh, get some advice and and gentle direction uh, for for some men, and I'm not saying you know no men can cook. But a, a lot of them just don't know where to start. And, and, yeah, you know. you're exactly right. And funny enough, we had that conversation at one of our coffee mornings recently. And one gentleman says, well, we don't need any help with cooking. And the wife said, yeah, but what if something happens to me? And he went, oh, now then. You know, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it was like, story. yeah, then with a whole <laughs> different lens. Yeah, so that is something that we're thinking about doing because we can use the facilities of St. Andrew's Church, um, who have been a, another fantastic partner for us. And they've got a lovely kitchen and area that maybe in the winter time we we might develop some of those nutrition programs and help people just understand a little bit better yeah yeah so so M- M- michelle you um you stretch from uh, Bena Madena through Fuencarola uh, to mijas which which is is an enormous area isn't it it is yeah yeah we do and the thing is as well we will never sort of not help anybody Oh, Michelle has... There he is as well, but we always try and get them to come down in or come down and see one of our welfare officers. So, yeah, yeah it's a huge area. So if if um, if people would like to get in touch with you, um, hopefully because they're, they're young and fit and have some free time and, and uh, w- w- want to contribute, 
<laughs> how, how would they do that, Michelle? Yeah, we've got um, a Facebook page, which is Age Concerned, Gwengarola, Me Up and Mental Madna, and we've also got a website. And on both of those, you'll find contact numbers for me, for the volunteer officers. But it also tells you we've got quite a big events program now that, you know, we offer um, sort of restaurant meals and drinks and things like that. So right. there's lots of things that you can either get involved socially or you can get involved in the charity. So we would love to hear from anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle, it's been really, uh, it's been lovely to, well, I, I can see you, people can't see you, but I, I can see it's lo- 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 lovely to see you again, uh, and, you know, uh, really just to chat to you about, about where things are going. So, um, do you manage to get any weekends off, Michelle? Um, well, I, do, I am quite strict, actually, normally from Friday evening, Saturday, Sunday, I try and have that off, apart from the dipping on a Sunday. <laughs> Good. Michelle, yeah, do try to do that. that's great thank you so much for joining me t- uh, today Michelle it's been lovely to speak to you and all the very best with uh, with the work that you're doing uh, we've had a lot of listeners in Spain please get in touch with Michelle if, if, uh, if, if you think you can help take care everyone have a wonderful weekend and uh, I shall be back next Friday you take care now